The bat's got his back broken, but Bruce had a backup. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Batman Knight's End Azrael Batman Armor. Upon his father's death, college student John Paul Valley learns that he'd been genetically altered and trained since birth by a secret society known as the Order of St. Dumas. They then activate his psychological conditioning, forcing him to become the most elite enforcer, Azrael. While on a mission to Gotham City, Azrael crosses paths with Batman and soon turns on the Order to join the Dark Knight. Later then, when Bruce Wayne is paralyzed by Bane, Bruce asks John Paul to become Batman for some time. John Paul then launches a campaign of brutal justice against the criminals of Gotham City and creates his own bat suit of armor. Going from being Azrael to now assaulting criminals in Gotham City, just before we get a closer look at the new DC Multiverse Batman Knights and Azrael Armor Batman, I'd like to send a big thank you to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that were kind enough to provide this sample we could have a look at. Technically, I could measure right to the top of his head right here, but considering he does have the big cape on the back of his body, that probably would be the tallest point on the figure. Based on that, Azrael Armor Batman is seven and a quarter inches in height, or it's 19 centimeters tall. As for a couple of comparisons, we can bring in, first of all, the Nightfall Batman to give you an idea of just how much bigger Azrael is now wearing the armor that he sports. I also thought it would be fun as well to bring in the original DC Multiverse, not the one from McFarlane Toys, but the one from Mattel. They had also done a Knight's and Azrael armor Batman. You can see how much smaller it is compared to the one that we get from Todd's team. We're sort of looking at these in reverse order. I should really be looking at the Red Armor Azrael because that's the standard retail release. The one that we're looking at actually in this review is the McFarlane Platinum Edition. I just think he looks a little bit better in blue. Now, of course, the accessories to come include with both the figures are going to be exactly the same. Azrael Batman comes include with, first of all, the display stand. Stand is nothing really new to report here other than just, again, the DC logo printed down below. And again, one peg to the side that can plug into either one of Azrael Batman's boots. And of course, off to the other side, the figure also comes include with a trading card. The appropriate colors, of course, are matching that of the red, not necessarily the blue that we're looking at in this review. But because, again, I was kind of identify Azrael Batman more in blue, because that's the armor that he starts with before he kind of decks up himself in armor here. I just wanted to start with blue first. The card itself does have of course depicted the batman in red armor and then on the back it's a very substantial read-up very hard to digest if you don't have the time to do that don't worry i've already taken the liberty of doing it for you i can move that card off to the side uh, from what i can see at least the standard retail release of asriel batman armor is also going to have include the exact same trading card kind of miffed unfortunately that they didn't use just a different colored card at least coloring off the suit a little bit differently but again get yourself at least a training card some assembly is required so if you really wanted to count for those those are somewhat his accessories if you look on the back of the figure carefully picking him up he has all these bladed parts to now his new futuristic cape these all have to be assembled separately if i was to remove one of them and just put the figure down here for a second they seem to be all identical very hard kind of rigid plastic that they're using here if you look at the end of it, you would swear for a second that there'd actually be some hingeability, some actual hinge there built into it. But you can actually, you can't hinge the, the cape back and forth. None of them you can. When you're plugging them in, I thought it would be a harder time just because this would have been softer plastic. These are obviously a harder plastic. And yet putting them in place doesn't seem to be difficult. If you take this little ledge of, see this little lip of plastic sticks out where my finger is tapping it right now. And then there's this peg. The peg will fit into here. And then the slot of plastic will actually fit into this groove. You have to do that then times six. And then once those are all in place, if I can get this one actually in here, there you go. The cape's all now ready. It does add, for obvious reasons, a lot of additional back heaviness to the figure. So most advised to probably get this guy displayed on a display stand right away in case he doesn't happen to fall backwards. The coloring of the costume is really quite good. I like the use of the golds and the grays. And he also has this kind of pale looking blue that only seems to make appearances here in his hands and his middle kind of abdomen area. Head sculpt is really good on this one. Again, we're going backwards this time around, looking at first the Platinum Edition before we beeline it back to the red version. I like the use of the blues. The metallic blues look really good on this figure. And again, he's got the little visor now in the front of his face. I would, though, imagine that the bodies are probably using the original Nightfall Azrael Batman, not the one where he's sporting armor in Night's End, but the one just before that, where he has more of a traditional-looking Batman cowl. 
because I don't have that figure yet, at the time that I was trying to really track one down, it was going for crazy money. I think the prices have gone down since, so I'm going to see if I can try to source one out over on eBay. But I would imagine, though, that the bodies are probably very similar down below here, and then they've just added the afforded additional armor pieces that you would have later on in the Night's End run. The armor looks really quite good. He's got the pockets here on the side, a very traditional thing you expect to see in the 90s. Pockets there on the sides of his thighs as well. I don't know what they actually even hold, probably gas capsules. I don't know. He also has these large pockets there on the side as well. And of course, a big bat logo there on the front of his chest. The armor does look good. The only thing I would say though, is I really wish that the hands could have been actually opened or at the very least, pack this guy with a second pair of punching hands and then start the figure inside the packaging with more kind of grabbing hands or like more gestured hands. Because I think they could have, first of all, given a little more of an opportunity to add a little more silver to the finish. Now, the red version that we will be looking at does change some of the colors on this costume that you'll see when we look at the review of him. He, I believe, actually does have silver hands rather than more of the pastel hands that come included with this release of him. Gold is nicely painted here on the side. I don't really see any real paint problems. And he also has the very large gauntlets that he has on his forearms that have this little string. I would imagine it's ammunition looking at then the back of the figure's body. And then this streams over then to this gauntlet. He probably shoots these out. Nice overall looking figure. Again, I was really thinking that the back of the pieces would have been a lot harder to put on there. But they seem to stay pretty good in place. You can move them back and forth and they seem to survive. I mean, it doesn't look like they're actually coming loose at all. Yes, there's no posability in there, but I mean, just to put posability on tiny little hinges like this, I would imagine it'd be very difficult to pull off. For the figure's articulation, going first back to his head sculpt, very nice to see that the figure does have a good ball joint here. And the ball joint, despite having all this extra stuff around him, these metallic curtains don't seem to get in the way at all of Batman being able to actually move his head up and down, back and forth. And again, you can rotate it all the way around. His upper torso is going to be on a ball joint. You'll be happy to know as well that the figure has a secondary ball joint at the base of his abdomen. This, unfortunately, is a flap of plastic. The flap of plastic actually is connecting these side utility belt pockets. So this is basically all one piece. But it all collectively moves together. You can move this figure all the way around. The figure does have ratcheted joints on the insides of his legs. You can bring those legs forward and back. One thing I will notice, though, and point out to you guys, is unfortunately with these smaller trunks that they've sported this guy, it means that this one side may probably be also on this side for you as well. But I find that these thighs were always prone to getting to falling outside of the uh, the trunks. You can see the way it's happening right now. You're probably going to have to always get yourself like a little screwdriver or a very non-sharp knife and just constantly fish the plastic out to drape it back over top of the top of the thigh. Just because, again, like just the size of the small trunks, they're always, again, these thighs always fall out frequently. But the legs move forward. They move back. Um, again, you've got the little bit of a swivel at the top of the thigh. Double hinge on the knee. Uh, unfortunately, though, on my figure, and he has a little bit of a looseness in ankles, uh, more so on this side, not as much on this side. Figure does also have toe articulation. I know we didn't really spend a whole lot of time. Oh, there's one. One of them just fell off. We'll have to put that back in a second. Didn't spend a whole lot of time actually talking about his legs, that he has, again, these little spikes that stick out the sides of his legs. These are all made of softer plastic. It's weird kind of feeling the lower half of his body. Stop right there before you think any further. The bottom half of his body actually kind of feels like it's 3D printed, and I'm sure that's not the case. It's just the way it's actually been textured, but sort of has. If you've ever 3D printed something with a more... I don't want to say more inferior 3D printer because, I mean, there's some really su su substantial, sophisticated 3D printers on the market that give you a smooth finish. But this kind of gives you like kind of the textured coarseness that goes along with like kind of the more older m models. Uh, his arms, of course, I didn't spend too much time really talking about his arms, but his arms do easily move out at 90 degrees. You can move them forward. You can move them back. He has a swivel at the bicep section. Figure does also have a double hinge on the elbow and the hands do rotate all the way around. Before we forget about it, and I'm sure before somebody reminds me, let's go ahead and take that, that last bit of his spiked cape. Just tuck it back in place. Yeah, you shouldn't really have too many problems when it comes to actually the parts of the cape falling off. I again thought this, I was thinking, okay, soft plastic on the top of his shoulders, hard plastic pegs, that's going to be a nightmare just trying to get them in. They don't actually have too hard of a time actually getting into his cape. Periodically, they, you might find that the figure, as you're kind of moving him around, you might find every once in a while that these do fall off, but they're very easy to put back in place. Good looking figure. Things that I would maybe have fixed on the figure is maybe giving him slightly larger trunks. I know normally we don't want the oversized diaper on these figures, but just because the trunks are so small on them, the thighs are always prone to popping out. And then of course you're going to have to get in there and try to fish the, the trunks to get around them. 
And then maybe giving him some pair of swappable hands as well. Because while I do like the closed fists, I think also a pair of gestured hands would also have gone really nicely. But nice looking figure. I know, again, we're working backwards. We really should have really looked at the red suit for version first before jumping over to the platinum edition. But my boy's always in blue. And I just think that Batman, from an Azrael standpoint, even though Night Night's End, I tend to think of the armor more in red. And I think of, of course, just the way that he first transitions. And then John Paul Valley essentially takes the role of Batman. That's when he starts with blue. And then Night's End, he kind of transitions over to the red i just thought the blue would have been a good way to start off these series of reviews well i guess now that i've got knight's end batman i'm gonna have to check back to ebay and hope that i can find a reasonably priced nightfall version of Azrael batman to go along with this one i'm sure they're probably using the same bodies if you have the nightfall batman and picked up the knight's end batman let me know if that's the case some tooling of course had to be then given to this one giving him now then the bladed cape that he has on the back of his body and sporting now a brand new head sculpt with a visor instead of just red eyes I still like the look of Azrael as Batman, where he has more of the traditional looking cowl. Even if this suit's a little bit more futuristic, giving him just a more traditional looking cowl, I think, worked a little bit better for the character. But of course, as he gets into Night's End, I mean, he's completely just bonkers by then. Nice looking figure, though. Of course, as already mentioned, we are going to be looking at the red version of the at Nightfall Azrael armor. Let me know if you've had the chance to pick up either one of these for yourself. Big thank you once again to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of the Batman Night's End armor and Azrael Batman, which was again, the McFarlane Platinum Edition. If you guys did enjoy this video, I want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and would like to see that review of the red version of Azrael, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell notification. Popping up also at the very end of this video will be in fact a playlist. Yes of all the other things I've looked at from McFarlane Toys and also branched off probably on the other side of the screen will be a playlist of all the other DC Multiverse reviews that I've done for the team as well. So there's lots for you guys to check out in the meantime. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.